By the end of this video, you're going to know exactly who you should be targeting in every solo shuffle round you play, instead of just mercilessly tunneling the first guy who died in round one. We've seen it countless times on our Discord server, where you guys ask us who you should be attacking in a matchup we've never heard of before, yet somehow our team of world-class veterans are still able to give the right answer. Now, how could that be possible? Well, it comes down to categorizing specs in three different ways, and once you understand what these categories are and how your class should interact with them, you'll have the confidence to press enter at the start of every lobby and let your team know exactly who to hit so that you can stop throwing away your rating after those grueling 40 minute queues. Before we get into things though, we want to take a moment to remind you of the 400 rating game guarantee you can find only over at skillcap.com. That's right, from just $6.99 a month, we guaranteed that you will see the results you want or get your money back, no questions asked. With a subscription to Skillcapped, you gain access to class guides that walk you through step by step how to deal damage, how to survive, and how to crowd control just like a rank one pro. We also have a massive library of nearly 2,000 arena commentaries that teach you how to play your toughest matchups. And if that wasn't enough, Skillcap members also gain access to the premium section of our Discord server, where they gain direct access to our network of pro players. This feature has helped players just like you reach their rating goals in recent months, so if you want to start seeing immediate results just like these ones, be sure to click on the discount link below right after this. For now though, let's get back into the video. As mentioned earlier, we've broken each class down into three categories. The first category is which class is good to tunnel. By this, we mean that no matter what the situation is, you will always get value from targeting them. This could be because you can reduce their damage output, or because you can simply beat them down due to their weak defenses. The second category is neutral. This means the class is situationally good to go on, be it later in the game when dampening has kicked in, or perhaps depending on what composition your solo shuffle lobby has given you. Our final category is the skill check category. This means that you can swap to the target to test their metal, and depending on how adept they are at their class, it may be worth tunneling them. These classes are generally great at kiting or cycling defensives. Something else to consider is how you should choose your targets when matched up against classes in the same category. As a general rule of thumb, when facing a melee and caster that are both in the same category, it's pretty much always going to be the right call to choose the caster as your main target. For example, if warriors and elemental shamans are both considered neutral targets, feel free to always select the elemental shaman as your primary kill target in the opener. However, if the warrior were to be considered a good target to train while the elemental shaman was a neutral target, then you going on the warrior would generally be the right idea. All right, with that out of the way, let's get into the guide, starting with the best melee to tunnel. Death Knights are the squishiest melee class in the game, making them a prime target for both casters and melees. The removal of Spell Warden and the poor scaling of Anti-Magic Shell and Anti-Magic Zone have made Death Knights no longer the anti-caster melee they were designed to be. This means that they are now one of the easiest targets for casters to kill. The only other cooldown Death Knights have is Icebound Fortitude, a measly 30% damage reduction, and Stun Immunity on a 2 minute cooldown if talented. Death Knights also struggle against melees due to their survival being based around Death strike, which forces them to go toe-to-toe -to -toe for abysmally low healing. Finally, Death Knights have some of the lowest mobility in the game. This means that they are easy to pin down and kill once you commit your cooldowns. Joining Death Knights in the best melee to tunnel are Assassination and Outlaw Rogues. These two specializations are brawlers who need to be in the fight for prolonged periods of time to be effective, which isn't great for them when you consider how much damage they take as frail leather classes. The need to stay in to deal damage also means Assassination and Outlaw Rogues will feel forced to tank all of your damage in order to deal their own damage, leading to them potentially not wanting to kite when they should. Combine this with the fact that if they do decide to kite in order to survive, that their effectiveness will practically drop to zero because they'll lose out on almost all their damage, and you end up with an excellent target choice no matter what they choose to do. In addition to this, while Vanish, Evasion, and Cloak of Shadows are all powerful active defensive abilities that can save the rogue's life, these abilities having two minute cooldowns means it's unlikely that they will get multiple uses from them in a single solo shuffle round. And to cap things off, rogues are especially vulnerable to stuns, as they have no defensive abilities that can be used while stunned. Their only option is to rely on cheat death, which doesn't even work half the time. The final melee you should be tunneling regardless of the situation are Feral Druids. Feral Druids are a momentum based class, having to ramp up their bleed damage over time. If left alone, a Feral Druid can easily dominate a match due to their immense damage and cyclone ability, which is further enhanced by the talent called Wild Attunement. This talent grants them a free Feral Frenzy for 5 seconds after casting, making it imperative to focus and shut them down. 
By focusing on tunneling feral druids, you can significantly reduce their pressure by forcing them into bear form. This causes them to waste offensive globals on defensive abilities. If a feral druid tries to survive the damage in cat form by trading their defensives, they will still fall over and die due to them being so weak. Next up, we have the neutral melee. These melee aren't tanky or squishy in their own right, but more so depends on what composition your team has stumbled into in solo shuffle. Let's start with Warriors. Fury can be a viable target in Solo Shuffle if you're playing a melee based composition. This is because most of their durability comes from their self healing, which most melee are able to reduce with a mortal strike effect. Fury Warriors are mostly tanky into casters due to their immense pressure, forcing the casters to kite rather than deal damage. They also have excellent self healing when they can connect, allowing them to support themselves in the early portion of the round. However, as all classes that rely on self healing do, Fury Warrior defensives become less effective as dampening increases, making them an increasingly more viable target as the match goes on. On the other hand, ARMS is the complete opposite, being tanky into melee and suffering into casters. ARMS is great into other melees due to their high armor and passive damage reduction of defensive stance. Their defensive of Die by the Sword also acts as a pseudo immunity into most other melee classes as they simply can't hit through it. Into casters, being plate unfortunately doesn't do anything, and Die by the Sword will only serve as a 30% damage reduction, unless the enemy casters are trying to melee you to death. Regardless of their spec though, anytime casters are able to exhaust a warrior's mobility and force them to be stuck in the middle of the map, warriors have nothing that can save them aside from spell reflect, resulting in them being sitting ducks. Next, we have Survival Hunters. Survival Hunters who abuse Pillar and weave in and out with their globals can be very difficult to deal with for casters. On maps with a lot of Pillars, such as Nagrand and Black Rook Hold, these Hunters can kite their opponents around the map. Thus, you might be better off picking a different target. However, some Survival Hunters may have poor positioning and will not utilize their ranged abilities from the Pillar. In these instances, it's worth skill checking them with damage or swaps to see how they can budget their defensives like Feign Death. If they aren't using them efficiently, they can be a viable target for your caster comp. As for melee, hunters are typically great targets, especially if they don't kite properly. So it's always a good idea to target a hunter as melee and skill check their ability to kite. If it's poor, they become a great target. Ret Paladins have had a roller coaster ride in Dragonflight. They went from being easy prey to raid bosses to their current iteration of neutral survivability. As all hybrids, Ret Paladins start off the game as absolute kings of healing, with Lay on Hands, Word of Glory, and Flash of Light all at their disposal. Coupled with Divine Shield, Divine Protection, and Blessing of Protection, they become nearly unkillable machines until dampening sets in and you've grinded through their cooldowns. Although, as we all know, dampening does not favor hybrids, and Ret Paladins definitely feel its impact, becoming prime targets as the game progresses due to their diminished self healing. If you're a team of casters, though, targeting a Ret Paladin for the whole game can be beneficial. This is because they lack movement abilities and can be easily caught in no man's land while trying to connect. As for melee, targeting Ret Paladins can be a viable strategy if you have a lot of control, such as playing with a sub rogue. In these instances, tunneling the Ret Paladin can prevent them from using their utility on their team, such as using Blessing of Sanctuary on their healer's crowd control. Finally, joining their hybrid brothers in the neutral bracket are of course Enhanced Shamans. Enhancement has gained the newly added Burrow, which will consistently save them if they pair it with their trinket, provided they aren't being channeled on or died to dots. Much like Ret Paladins, Enhanced Shamans provide very high healing to their entire team, making it very annoying to kill anything early on in the game. To counteract this, make sure you kill their healing streams and try to dispel their earth shields. The toolkit of Enhance is also incredibly powerful into wizards, allowing them to shut down casts with the short cooldown of Wind Shear, Grounding Totem, and Sundering. Due to all these factors, it is best to kill Enhancement Shamans during a stun or later in the game when their healing has diminished due to dampening. Otherwise, it's perfectly fine to crowd control them with roots, fears, and stuns to prevent them from being as disruptive. Now, let's discuss the skill check classes, which are the classes that rely on effective cooldown management or strong kiting abilities to survive. Demon Hunters are a glass cannon. They deal a lot of damage, but they are also very vulnerable to stuns. If a Demon Hunter is caught out of position or makes a slight mistake, they can quickly be annihilated. However, if a Demon Hunter is played skillfully, they can become very hard to pin down and kill. DH cooldowns are all about using them preemptively before the damage comes. For example, you can use Glimpse to immune incoming casts, Blur to dodge a kidney shot, or Metamorphosis to immune a Stormbolt. The possibilities are endless. Also note that their biggest cooldown, Darkness, can be easily countered by Nox or just straight up RNG on your abilities. 
If you're facing a Demon Hunter, be sure to test how well they play with a few swaps here and there. If they aren't playing the class to its full potential, they can easily become the best target in the arena. Joining Demon Hunters in the skill check category are Windwalkers. Windwalkers have absurd kiting potential, making them difficult for both melee and casters to connect to. This becomes particularly apparent on maps with a Z axis, like Blade's Edge and Mugumbala, as by porting away, they can escape death very frequently. Windwalkers' damage profile suits the hit and run playstyle very well too, so hitting them is not as punishing as tunneling another melee class as they do not lose any damage by being out of the fight. However, if the Windwalker overstays their welcome, or you are playing on a small map like Ruins of Lordaeron, they are an excellent target due to their limited kiting potential and leather build. Windwalkers also have to use their cooldowns wisely, as you can easily go through them if they press them at too low HP, so swapping on them to test how they react is never a bad idea. Our final skill check melee are Subtlety Rogues. Subtlety Rogues can adhere to a hit and run playstyle similar to that of Windwalker Monks. Unlike their assassination and outlaw counterparts, they do not need to stay in the fight for prolonged periods of time to deal damage. This allows them to take less damage passively due to them only needing to win in setups when the entire enemy team is crowd controlled. They also have access to two vanishes thanks to the without a trace talent, and can have a 33% reduced cooldown on it too thanks to the PvP talent Thieves Bargain, not to mention two shadow steps. This makes good sub-rogues incredibly slippery and hard to pin down after they do their setup. However, if the rogue does not rotate his cooldowns properly and stays in the fight, they can be tremendous targets to go on because of the raw amount of damage the class takes. So to recap the melee breakdown we have, Good to Train, Assassination, Outlaw, Death Knights, and Ferals. These classes are susceptible to being tunneled due to their lack of defensives and having their pressure reduced when targeted. Neutral, Warriors, Survival Hunters, Ret Paladins, and Enhancement Shamans. These classes are acceptable to go on if certain conditions are met, such as a full caster lobby or late dampening. Skill Check, Demon Hunters, Windwalkers, and Subtlety Rogues. These classes are more difficult to train due to their kit. They have a lot of defensives and utility that can make them difficult to kill. However, they often require a higher skill cap to play and are vulnerable when caught out. Up next, we have the best range to target. Coming in first are Devastation Evokers. Devastation Evokers' main defensive is Obsidian Scales. However, they often have to use this offensively to get their setup off, as it gives them aura mastery when using the Obsidian Metal Talent. This can leave them particularly vulnerable if they don't one-shot you in the opener. They also have a short range on most of their abilities, which means they often have to put themselves in unfavorable positions on the map to be able to connect their spells. If you are another range class, you can drag them backwards through the middle of the map and easily burst them down. As for melee, Devastation of Ochre is also a terrific target. This is largely due to their mobility being easy to match for any class, and the fact that they are using mail armor making them take huge physical damage. To cap things off, their healing is also not as strong as other hybrids, having to rely on hardcast living flames most of the time to have any defensive impact. Moving on, Affliction and Destruction Warlocks are also great targets, regardless of their kiting potential. This is because they do not play with soul link like demonology warlocks and have to cast far much more than demo does. When left alone, a good Affliction Warlock can solo the entire team with unstable afflictions and malefic raptures, so it's important to stop their momentum from building up. Similarly, Destruction Warlocks can become very oppressive with crowd control and burst you down quickly if given the room to do so. Therefore, when faced up against one of these specs, you should always tunnel them to prevent their damage and shut down all of their casts. The last ranged coming in under the good to train category are Fire Mages. Fire Mages have two main defensive cooldowns, Ice Block and Cauterize. However, their true defensive is the range of their abilities, which is increased to 55 yards by the Flame Cannon Talent. This allows them to stay at a distance and deal huge damage without taking much damage in return. They are especially squishy thanks to the glass cannon talent reducing their health by 20%. For those of you who play with percentages, that means that they have around 450k HP in full gear. If left alone, a competent fire mage can easily destroy your entire team. Therefore, it is essential to focus them to prevent their flame cannon stacking and becoming a victim to their burst. Now let's get into the neutral ranged. Much like with the neutral melee, these classes can be viable targets in the right scenarios. First up are Demonology Warlock. They have the same defensive cooldowns as Affliction and Destruction Warlocks, Unending Resolve and Dark Pact. However, they also benefit more from Soul Leech thanks to the number of pets they have up, and Soul Link, which gives them a flat 5% damage reduction, making them tankier than the other two specs. Leaving a Demonology Warlock free casting is also not nearly as dangerous as a free casting Affliction or Destruction Warlock because their output is much lower. No one's getting one shot by a hand of Gul'dan. 
Even so, this does not mean that Demonology Warlocks are bad to hit. For certain classes such as Feral and Elemental, being able to cleave down their pets and funnel damage onto the Warlock can be devastating. Classes with really high sustained physical damage, such as Warriors and Demon Hunters, will also benefit greatly from targeting the cloth wearing demo locks, as they have both the damage and mobility to overwhelm the spec, especially since the recent nerfs to Soling. Joining Demonology in the neutral tier are Shadow Priests, who have fantastic defensives in the cooldown trading environment of Solo Shuffle. Being able to pair their dispersion with most offensive CDs in the game, and rotating through life swap and fade make this class incredibly annoying to punish. You probably won't kill them quickly unless you're double melee, but if you're good at landing your kicks, Shadow Priest can prove to be a great target as you'll be able to stop them from doing much damage. Next, we have Boomkins. Unlike Feral Druids, Boomkins can still be effective when tunneled thanks to Alkin Adept increasing the speed of their Cyclone and much of their damage being through instance. Precognition also means that if you get faked on those Alkin Frenzy clones, your entire team is going to be crowd controlled in an instant. Even though they can peel themselves quite a lot, in deeper dampening, balanced druids become great targets due to their reduced self healing. Just be sure to swap off them if they are experts at using wild charge and kiting around the map. Elemental Shamans have very similar defensives to Enhance, the only caveat is that Elemental have to hard cast heals. Unfortunately, they also have Enhance's weakness of dying in stuns and can be a great option to target if you're a melee that can keep up with them and lock them down. However, if you're a caster and the enemy Elemental Shaman is weaving in and out of the pillar, they can be very difficult to kill. This is because they have a number of tools that make it difficult to land casts on them, such as Wind Shear and Grounding Totem. Bear in mind that Wind Shear is short range though, so you should prevent yourself a headache and pull them out into the open to avoid being disrupted. Moving on to the skill check ranged, first we have Marksmanship and BM Hunter. As with Survival Hunter, Beast Mastery and Marksmanship's main way to live is through their kiting skills and how they abuse the map they are on. By being true ranged and having the ability to move while dealing damage, neither of these specs necessarily has to be in the middle of the map. This means a good hunter can avoid a lot of damage by hugging a pillar. Fiend Death is also exceptionally strong for surviving incoming burst. This can be a caster's nightmare and can be a major reason for the hunter not dying. Nonetheless, not every hunter is going to be the best at their spec, therefore giving them a quick swap can easily inform you of their skill level, allowing you to tunnel them depending on their reaction. However, high mobile melee that can keep up with a BM or MM hunter, even if they are good at kiting, can still choose the hunter as their main target. We also consider Arcane and Frost Mages to be a skill check class. While Arcane Mages have Temporal Shield, Alter Time, and Greater Visibility, they need to use them preemptively before taking incoming damage. All of Arcane's defensives, aside from Ice Block, are also in the Arcane School, making them highly susceptible to being interrupted on their DPS rotation and killed. Arcane Mages also rely heavily on kiting to survive. It's for this reason it can be worth attempting to target them to see if they're good at kiting or not, as tunneling a weaker mage can be a great strategy. To go on an arcane mage, you should make sure your composition either has good lockdown, a purge for their alter time and temporal shield, or at the very least, strong mobility. This is similar to frost mages who lack temporal shield, but have the advantage of two ice blocks and not relying on the arcane school for casting. As a result, frost mages are more capable of trading defensive sphere cooldowns, making them a less appealing target for burst classes like subtlety rogues. However, if you're a caster, arcane and frost mages are viable targets as they can generally be forced backwards due to their lower DPS as compared to other range classes. Here we have our full targeting tier list for range DPS. In general, you can't really go wrong with tunneling a range DPS. Devastation Evoker, Affliction, Destruction, and Fire Mages are the best targets to hit for either melee or ranged due to the immense damage they take and the ability to shut them down by pressuring them. In neutral, we have Demonology Warlocks since shutting them down doesn't do as much and they are tankier than Destruction and Affliction. Joining Demonology, we have our hybrids of Elemental Shaman, Boomkin, and Shadow Priest due to how well they deal under pressure in most compositions. Finally, we have our skill checks of Hunters and Mages who can be squishy if not played to the class's potential. Now let's move on to healers. We don't recommend tunneling healers in most scenarios. However, in melee cleave mirrors, especially when you're up against one or two neutral or tanky melee, opting to train the enemy healer can sometimes be the best strategy. It's also the sort of thing you can do to pull off wins in what otherwise seems like a losing matchup. The only time you should almost never do this is when you're up against two casters, as they simply get far too much value from free casting. With that being said, Holy Paladins and Fist Weavers find themselves in their own category of being a great target regardless of the situation. Paladins may seem hard to kill on paper due to the amount of cooldowns they can trade with Blessing of Protection, Divine Shield, and Divine Protection. However, due to Paladin healing being tied to one spell school and their need to hard cast so much, they are especially susceptible to interrupts. 
Couple that with their lack of healing over time effects and that paladins also die very easily in stuns, and you end up with holy paladins being great targets for a majority of lobbies. As for Fist Weavers, they are excellent targets to tunnel because they are always in the fight and their healing can be easily countered. Abilities like Evasion or Die by the Sword can prevent them from healing and they can also be kited by most casters. Additionally, Fist Weaver healing is not particularly high, so once they get bursted in a stun, they can find it very hard to recover. Moving on, the rest of the healers can be swapped to in the right scenarios. First up, Disc Priests can be good swap targets if they have already burned through their pain suppressions and your team has a stun available. You may be tempted to tunnel a Disciplined Priest due to their low mobility, however, we strongly advocate against this. Disc Priests have some of the best offensives available to healers with Focused Will, Desperate Prayer, Dome, and Life Swap, resulting in you just wasting your time. This also goes for Holy Priests, as they have almost all the same defensives as Disc, although they trade pain suppression for Guardian, which can also be used in stuns. And who can forget Spirit of Redemption? However, Holy Priest can also die though if they waste their Guardian or in deep dampening given that a lot of their defensive cooldowns rely on increased healing throughput as opposed to damage reduction. Another healer that can be swapped to are Preservation of Ochres. This is because they often have to play very close to the enemy team due to their limited range on their heals, making them an easy swap target. As far as their defensives go, Obsidian Scales is pretty weak and can easily be ignored if you have enough damage. Their only real defensive is Emerald Communion, which is healing based, resulting in it scaling pretty bad in late dampening. Next, let's talk about Mistweavers. With all their mobility, Mistweaver can be very difficult to pin down. However, if they do not play with Eminence, which allows them to teleport while stunned, or are out of their transcendence range, they can be caught out of position and killed. Your chances of killing a monk outside of a stun are very slim thanks to Cocoon's short cooldown and large absorb paired with revival and disarm if they choose to play with it. Finally, the last healer that can be swapped to with good results are Restoration Druids. However, catching them may be quite difficult. If the enemy Restoration Druid has poor positioning though, they can be fantastic targets as long as they are not in bear form. They can even die through bark skin if they do not have pre-hots or it's high enough dampening. Note that Restoration Druids can prevent your kill with the immunity from Tranquility though, so make sure you do not overcommit too much for a kill if they still have this major CD available. As for Restoration Shamans, we don't advise going on them unless they have already burned through Spirit Link or are low from Passive Cleave. This is because, despite recent nerfs, Restoration Shamans still have great instant healing through HOTS such as Riptide and Earth Shield to keep themselves alive while kiting. And if you end up forcing them to cast, the recent buffs to Healing Surge and Healing Wave means Resto Shamans don't have to cast much to get themselves topped. Earthen Wall is also a very short cooldown for how powerful it is, and couple that with Healing Stream and Healing Tide, you're going to have to keep swapping off the Shaman to deal with totems, reducing your overall pressure. And if that wasn't enough, Resto Shamans also have access to Nature's Guardian, which sort of serves as a cheat death every 45 seconds. And with that, we have our tier rankings for healers. As mentioned earlier, tunneling healers is generally a risky choice. However, if you follow the scenarios we provided, such as swapping to a monk if they have used their teleport, you can easily kill them and win the round. Alright guys, that about does it for this one. As a reminder, don't forget about our 400 rating gain guarantee, which you can only find over at skillcap.com. From just $6.99 a month, we guarantee that you'll see the results you want or you'll get your money back, no questions asked. So if you want to gain access to our world-class guides and network of pros to start climbing the ladder, be sure to click on the discount link below and sign up today. For now though, we want to thank you all for watching and we'll see you next time.